Hi lovely viewers, it's me again your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Good day and good morning to all listening to us by uh, through social media. We have Honorable Rafael Nakachinda, the Secretary General, having a press conference, but I'll give a preview or brief background remarks. Yesterday, in Kawambwa District, Honorable Magistrate Martin Namushi, sitting as Kawambwa subordinate court, delivered a judgment involving Kawambwa Member of Parliament, who is also our Deputy Secretary General, Honorable Nixon Chilangwa. Uh, his counterpart, Pambashe MP, Honorable Ronald Chitotela, and five others. Um, you are aware that uh, a prison sentence was given um, against one of the counts of malicious damage to Honorable Nixon Chilangwa. And for Honorable uh, Ronald Stotela, uh, the matter of Asoni, in which he, the magistrate found them guilty, has, has been referred to the High Court for sentencing because the case of Asoni requires a sentencing higher than 10 years. In this matter, uh, Mr. Stotela and Mr. Chilangwa, with five others, have been appearing in the Kawamba Magistrate Court for alleged cases of Asoni threatening violence, malicious damage to property, and uh, assault cases allegedly committed in August 2021. The other five include our council chairperson for Kawambwa, Kalumba, Chifumbe. Then the others are Devi Kaniki, Chabu Chitotela, Charit Musantu, and Kunda Chitotela. You must have heard us through many, many, the last three years, that we've accused the president of using lawfare to destroy the opposition and to destroy Zambia's democracy. Just look at how they stole Kwacha and Kabushi seats um, where the state prevented Honorable Boman Lusambo and Honorable Joseph Malange from participating and contesting in the, in, in the seats. The Constitutional Court has since confirmed that uh, uh, Honorable Joseph Malangi and Honorable Boman Lusambo were illegally and unfairly prevented from participating through that election. In normal democracies, there will have been a repeat election where the two should have participated. The government has given numerous councillors jobs in the Ministry of Health and Education especially. The intention again is to cause by-elections and steal these elections. And you have seen the numerous world by-elections that have since taken place. There are more serious schemes to use the law, uh, to use threats or use of force against us political opponents and to use especially the courts of law to destroy members of the opposition, accusing them of all sorts of things from corruption, crimes, and hate speech. All of us, from people in PF, people in, uh, you know, Fred Membe, everyone else has also been appearing in, this, in these matters. The president is using what is called lawfare. In lawfare, it's a strategic use of legal proceedings, judicial proceedings, and court pro proceedings to intimidate or hinder political and business opponents. Now, even the business entities have been affected. They've not been spared, especially those accused of either sympathizing with the PF or belonging to the PF. They've scandalized and denied government business on the allegations that these business entities are patriotic front or are sympathizer, sympathizers of patriotic front. I can cite an example. Uh, first of all, the, when President Akainde Chilema came into office, he said uh, these businesses were supplying air. He did audits after audits, and there was even an extensive audit done by six reputable institutions on the debt that the state accumulated. And in many cases, even after the audits were done, 
these business entities have never been paid. Uh, uh, many have gone bankrupt and have their lives lost. And you, you've recently seen how, seen recently how they've singled out Mikalile trading and his loan given to the Zambian government. Of all the loans, about 14 billion, they just singled out this loan, subjected it to audits after audits. And you saw recently the Ministry of Education directed that uh, um, schools should not receive these education materials from Mikalile tra trading. People, what is at stake here, citizens? is that it's a destruction of democracy and the rule of law. Dr. Sishua Sishua has written extensively on the shrinking democratic space and the use of lawfare. Especially, you can go to his article, How Zambia's President is Using Lawfare to Subvert Democracy. And decide something that I want to also cite. Sometimes, democracy dies with a bang, but many times, Democracy dies slowly in plain sight at the hands of elected officials through the gradual erosion of political norms and institutions. We've seen how our institutions have been destroyed. We've seen how the judiciary parliament, ECZ, the police, all have, all have been destroyed in this quest. I will invite Honorable Rafael Nakachinda to speak specifically to the matters regarding Honorable Nixon Chilangwa, our Deputy Secretary General, and Honorable Ronald Stotel, our member of the Central Committee, and our Council Chairperson for uh, Kawambwa, and then the others that have been jailed, in light of what I've just given you as background. Honorable Rafael Nakachinda. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair, information. And, um Thank you to our viewers and listeners, wherever you are catching us from. Um, allow me to begin by saying that on behalf of uh, uh, the president of the party, uh, President uh, Edgar Chakarung, who is also six years the Republican president, and the entire leadership of Patriotic Front, uh, we first of all are standing with the families of uh, our colleagues that uh, have suffered this misfortune. As it has been stated, uh, what has happened or what happened in Kaomba uh, was uh, really, you know, as it were in a normal situation, unexpected. But uh, from the time this, this matter was orchestrated by the UPND and pronouncements were made and the declarations were made by the UPND that they are going to target Pambashe constituency, Kaomba constituency, and according to their plan, actually they were, those two were supposed to come just after Kabushi as well as uh, Kwacha constituency by elections that saw uh, the criminal enterprise that was undertaken by the UPND you know, collaborating and conspiring with the Electoral Commission of Zambia. Uh, unfortunately, uh, where judicial officers observe and are committed to ethics and professionalism, the major city that was presiding over the cases in the case in Kawambwa or cases in Kawamba of our colleagues would not have even, you know, qualified to preside over those cases because uh, there were recordings of him having meetings with some of the uh, UPND officials and some from state house being instructed that he needed to convict the colleagues with or without evidence. And um, Honorable Chilangwa took it upon himself when those revelations came out and went and complained at the Judicial Complaints Authority or Commission, which body, unfortunately, we have seen it had turned out under the UPND as a slaughterhouse only for the careers of those that are, you know, desirable in the eyes of the UPND to continue being in the judicial, in the judiciary. But for those who are 
perpetuating and advancing the UP in this bidding and Misaka in this bidding, they are protected by that particular body. This gentleman, unfortunately, everything that was said in those audios and all those conversations, including the promise of him being promoted and moved to Rwanda, have all happened. As we speak, he is actually in Rwanda. I was personally privileged to have gone to follow through the matters and the evidence that was being adduced in, in court. Clearly, there is nowhere, anywhere, either by the witnesses that were presented by the state or indeed any other evidence that connected the colleagues who have been convicted to the purported crime that was committed. Of course, I must state at this particular stage that we know the schemes of the UPND and as a party together with the families of our colleagues that are affected, we are going to fight with everything um, to have our friends and our colleagues, you know, have justice, you know, meted out for them. And to that effect, obviously, uh, the first step is to have these matters appealed to the higher court. And to that effect, the lawyers were already instructed yesterday uh, that they should proceed to filing notices of appeal and that uh, following that step, they should be able to apply for bail. As it were, just after filing in notices of appeal, uh, the magistrate didn't even uh, you know, waste time. He made an express ruling immediately to reject you know, an application for bail for those under you know, whose jurisdiction or jurisdiction to give bail remained with the magistrate's court. To our surprise, last night, uh, in a manner that uh, is uh, shocking for everybody, Honorable uh, Chirangwa, Honorable Chitotena, our council chairperson for Kaombo, and the other colleagues that were convicted, were moved in the night to a non you know, correctional facility. We are just getting to hear rumors that it could either be in uh, Mansa or any other, but it's not yet confirmed. But that whole movement is meant to prevent the lawyers that are in Kaomba to access you know, their clients, to be able to get them to sign the necessary documents for the necessary you know, applications that they are to make. All these schemes and kangaroo activities and shenanigans are what the UPND have continued to do using you know, um, institutions of government like the Correctional Service, uh, institutions of government like the judiciary, as it were, and so on, all meant to try and achieve one thing, create by-elections with the hope of increasing numbers in Parliament. And we know what the scheme is. There is a scheme to try and remove the 50 plus one. There is a scheme to try and increase the tenure of office of uh, presidency from five years to seven years. There is a scheme to try and uh, um, also change the constitution, hoping that uh, uh, in case they don't achieve what they intend to achieve through the judiciary, maybe they can change the law and be able to bar some of the contestants. So we know the grand scheme around this whole, you know, operation. But the Zambian people, the reason we have come to you is to appeal. And I think all of us must reach in the name of patriotism, reach a stage of enough is enough. And we need, you know, to do everything we can to prevent the destruction of our democracy, to, you know, prevent the continued erosion, erosion or uh, degeneration in, you know, insofar the, uh, as, uh, insofar as uh, adhering to the rule of law. What is happening in this country, you know, is uh, very sad. It actually threatens the peace that this country has enjoyed from independence up to today. The agitation among the citizens is too high in view of the high cost of living. Coupled now with what we are experiencing of having individuals targeted, brutalized, and subjected to this brutal way of treatment by way of abusing judicial processes, I think it's very unfortunate. But to members of Patriot Front, 
remain calm. It is darkest before dawn. Remain calm, let's commit ourselves to uh, what the Zambian people expect of us, and that is to get reorganized, remain strong and committed. These um, uh, persecutions and uh, harassment and experiences all of us are going through are only speaking to one thing, that uh, we have an assignment in this country and we will be able to execute it uh, at a time that the mandate is granted back to us in 2026. So shalom, and we stand with the Chitoteras, we stand with the Chilanguas, we stand with the Kalumbas, we stand with all our colleagues that are victims of the abuse of the judicial you know, process. Thank you very much, and God bless. Thank you, SG. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're discussing the, the reacting to the occurrences in Kawambwa yesterday where um, you know the magistrate in, in, in Kawambwa you know gave a, a sentence of five years to Honorable Nixon Chilangwa and then referred the matter of Honorable Chitotela to the High Court for sentencing. Um, SG this is similar to what we had with the case of Chimba Kambwili. You remember Chimba Kambwili was jailed for hate speech by Kasama Magistrate Court. Our concern there was not to discuss the merit or demerits of that case, was that there were other cases of hate speech, such as Wumba uh, Malambo of Kafiwe, uh, Council Chairperson for Kafiwe, uh, district and she's never been prosecuted for uh, hate remarks, hate speech remarks. Recently, we had Honorable Minister of uh, Education Douglas Siakalima, who issued hate speech against the people of Luapula. He's never been prosecuted. He's never even been dropped. There was even an attempt by our brother Sean Tembo from uh, 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 PEP, uh, the political party. He attempted to privately prosecute Honorable Douglas Yakalima, but the DPP, Director of Public Prosecutions, refused to grant authority for that prosecution. So it's a dubious way. Our, our property in Mongu, a car was bent by card, as you remember, uh -huh. turned and they bent it. The assons are known, they are in cameras. They were never arrested, but you will arrest Chilangwa, you will arrest Chitotela. But those that bent our vehicle in Mongu, you will not arrest them. We've never been happy with the matter of Jackson Kungo. You know, that's a murder that occurred. You have never seen any severe sentence against any of those UPND members that you can even see in the camera. It's a dubious use of the law. Like we stated, President Akainde Chilema is engaged in lawfare using the law, using the courts, using judicial proceedings to destroy his political opponents. For our members remain strong, SG is on the case of, um, uh, of Honorable Chilangwa and, and, and Honorable Chitotela, and our lawyers are on the case to see what can be done. Mm. Yeah, SG wishes to add some more. I think it's important that we put it on record. Yeah. The UPND commit crimes but they find a way in which they will implicate those that respond yeah. to the crimes that they've committed. Yeah. We have colleagues who are in court today in response to UPND cadres who said things, first of all, that um, uh, in this case are regional in nature, tribal in nature, discriminating against other regions and other tribes. Yeah. When though some of our colleagues responded, with disdain against such utterances, they were arrested. Those who were provocative, they never arrested. The case of Chimba Kambwele, you have uh, Misaka in the Ichirema, and uh, during his campaign, being proposed that this is the time for a Tonga now to rule. And there is a response. You arrest the one who has responded to condemn such practices. Mm. And even the voting pattern in southern province. Yeah. He becomes the, the criminal yeah. and not those who are perpetuating tribalism. When it comes to corruption, they have attempted to smear and run a prop propaganda that the PF were corrupt. Today, 
We are having all those who are alleged to have committed, you know, crimes in terms of corruption, actually being sanitized by the president. Yeah. Um, we have his staff at State House who are alleged to have abducted a member of parliament. They are being shielded and protected by, you know, uh, the president. And the person who was a victim of abduction today is in jail. They are trying to manufacture cases against him. That is the script of the UPND. Commit the offense and then find a way to implicate their political opponents. We are having President Nawakwi now in court over a matter that was alleged that the abductors of those colleagues were actually were named. and named and they co co confessed. You remember our good lady, Mrs. Cat Catolo, who mm. actually confessed to have directly participated in those abductions together with the president. Yeah. But as it were, they commit a crime, then they try to implicate patriotic front. Zambians, we have a criminal organization called UPND in government, run by people who are criminal minded. We have a duty to stop these people soon and soonest. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. In fact, in recent matters, SGU be holding a press conference regarding the corruption allegations and the demands that we are making in light of this. But we came to the media essentially to respond to the matters that have occurred to our very senior leaders. As we speak now, literally Kawambwa has no leadership because Pambashe and Kawambwa are constituency seats in Kawambwa. And even the council chairperson has also been you know, jailed in this matter. And this is what they wanted, create these uh, uh, triple by-elections. But we hope that, uh, you know, with God willing, that this should not happen. This is an injustice, as uh, SG has uh, uh, asserted, that there was even a complaint against a magistrate, uh, Martin Namushi. He was taken to the Judicial Complaints Authority. Audios and details were even given in evidence. The JCC never heard that case. And the magistrate as required by law, should have recused himself in light of these strong allegations that were taken to the JCC, no? The JCC never heard the matter, and the magistrate, imagine with the hostility that he had with uh, the accused person, proceeded to hear the matter. And even the so-called promotion that is in the audio actually even took place. The man is now a magistrate in Wansha, a senior magistrate in Wansha. God bless you. God bless our country. Until next time, Honorable SG will be coming to you on the matters of corruption. We have to respond to these huge, huge, momentous uh, occurrences in the last one week that has shaken this government and we have demands to make on this government with your support as Zambians. Thank you. All right, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.